Hi everyone, I'm Shinjinji. Welcome to the 12th episode of the 19 the Woods in Unity series. In this episode we are finally going to build a dialogue system, which was the most awaited feature of this series. For the dialogue system we are going to use Yarn Spinner, but first we need to actually create a dialogue. To do so we are going to use the Yarn Editor. You can either choose to download it on your machine by clicking on the Releases page and selecting the one for your operating system, or you can use the one in the browser, which is the one I'm going to use for this episode. Once the Yarn Editor opens, the first thing you'll see is a dialog node named Start. You can create new nodes by clicking on the plus sign. To enter a node, double click on it. Select the text and remove the default one, and also write the following dialog. By using double square brackets, you'll be able to write your options to a certain question. Just be aware that as of now, the following syntax create two more brackets that you'll have to delete yourself. On the left side, you write the answer, and on the right side, you write the node, where the dial needs to go through. To exit from a node, click outside the nodes window. You'll see appearing two nodes with the names you have specified in the dialog options, which were unknown and knowledge. Click on the unknown one and write the following dialog, then do the same for the knowledge one. Once we've finished writing the dialog, go on File and choose Save as Yarn. Once saved, go on Unity and on the Assets folder create a new one named Dialogs. Inside it put the dialog we created before and rename it Sally. Now that we have the dialog, we need to import the dialog system itself. Go on Window Package Manager and copy the link you'll find in the video description. Click on the plus sign, select Add Package from Git URL and paste the link and click Add. Once Yarn Spinner is been imported, you'll see that the icon for the dialog is changed. Now in the hierarchy, create a new empty game object and name it Dialog. Reset its transforms and create a new empty game object inside it, named Dialog Runner. Add a Dialog Runner component to it. Be sure that the Start node has the same name of the starting node in your dialog, and that Start automatically is checked. Then drag the dialog to the yarn scripts list. Add a dialog UI and in memory variable storage component to the dialog runner game object. Drag the dialog runner to the variable storage and dialog UI property. Right click the dialog game object and select UI canvas. Put the event system inside the dialog game object and rename the canvas dialog container. On the canvas scaler component, change the UI scale mode to scale with the screen size, and for the match property choose 0.5. Inside the dialog container create a new empty game object and name it dialog bubble. Change the width to 250 and the height to 200. Add a vertical layout group, remove child force expand, and for the child alignment select lower center. Activate control child size for both. Inside the dialog bubble, create a UI image and rename it Bubble. In the sprites folder, create a new one named Dialog. Import the images you'll find in the video description. Try the dialog one to the source image property and for the image type, select Sliced. This will make sure that the image follows the size of the text. Add a vertical layout group, remove child force expand, for the child alignment, select upper center and control child size for both. Then, for the padding, put 40 on all sides. Right-click on the bubble game object and add a text mesh pro text. Click on import TMP essentials. In the alignment property for the text, select center and middle. Wrapping should be enabled and overflow to truncate. Choose uppercase and lower the font size to 20. Right click the bubble game object again and create a new empty one. Name it pointer rect and inside it create a UI image named pointer. Drag the dial pointer, click on set native size and position it under the bubble. Now let's create a new empty game object inside dialog container and name it options. This one will be where the option buttons will be stored. In fact, let's create them. Right click on the options game object and select the text mesh pro button. Change the width to 250, then duplicate the button two times. Move the button so that they all display, select the last one and rename it to continue. Also change its text to continue. On the onclick event, add a new one. 
drag the dial runner and select Dialog UI Mark Line Complete. Move the dial bubble above and go back to the Dialog Runner game object. Here we need to add the Dialog Container game object to the Dialog Container property. Then add the option buttons, excluding the continue one. Finally, on the online start event, add the two new ones one for the continue button and the other for the text. Choose game object that set active for both, but only the text button to true. For the online finish displaying event, add a new one and drag the continue button. Choose game object that set active, this time to true. On the online update event, add a new one, this time dragging the text and selecting test mesh pro UGUI that text. And for the last one, online end, add two new ones and drag the text and the continue button. Set for both game object that set active to false. Now run the game and you'll see that the dialog shows in the dial bubble. With the continue button you'll be able to go to the next line and choose an option with the other buttons. In the next episode we are going to improve the dial bubble by displaying, selecting and controlling the options for the bubble itself, removing those ugly buttons. This is all for this video, like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode comes out and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the journey!